Hi everyone, Jarrett Volzer, founder of TabPilot here to give you a tour of TabPilot Tablet Manager. On your screen you'll see three blue screens on your left. These are three tablets that are sitting on my desk and they're broadcasting to the screen so that you can see them here. And I'm going to make one a little bit larger so you can see what's on the screen so that we can look at Launch and Lock. This is the student interface on the tablet and students are locked into just the websites and apps that are configured by the teacher. So in Launch and Lock a student cannot access other apps uh, nor can a student access settings. So even if we tap on the clock in the bottom right here and then on the little settings icon, uh, when we go to settings, the student would be presented with the not allowed message. And the only option here is to tap the screen and return back to launch and lock. So the only way out of launch and lock is to use the icon in the bottom right with the padlock and enter an administrator password to get out of launch and lock and back to the standard uh, Android interface. So that's the tablet interface that students see. Uh, on the right side of the screen is the tab pilot control tower. And this is where teachers and administrators can configure uh, the tablets and view tablet screens. That's actually the first feature that we'll look at is the view and lock feature available to teachers and administrators. And this will give a thumbnail of the screen of each of the tablets in the device group. So from here we can see what's going on on, on each tablet and I'm going to launch a, an app on a couple of them so you'll see the actual tablet screens on the left but then you'll see what the teacher would see through launch and lock on the right as the thumbnails update to show what's on those tablet screens uh, in thumbnail view. Then the teacher can click on one of the thumbnail views and it will load in a larger image of what's on the screen. You'll notice a print button there at the bottom. You could even uh, print out a copy that has the date and time stamp as a record of what was on the screen at that time if students are accessing things that they're not supposed to. So when we hit back and go back to the uh, thumbnail view, the next feature I'll show you is the lock feature. I'm going to click on the all button here and let it put a check mark in all of the boxes. Now we can lock the screens and we can even put a custom message in here, which the system will remember for next time. And when I click lock, all of the screens will freeze. My custom message comes up and you'll see the lock symbol on top of all the thumbnails to indicate that the, uh, the tablet screens are locked. To unlock, I can just go to the all link again and then we'll use the unlock screen button. And students can go back to work. Uh, the screens will return back to where the student was working prior to that. And I'm going to return them each to the launch and lock screen again. So the next question would be how do we get these apps to appear or disappear from the student's screens? Well that's done by creating or editing profiles. A profile is a collection of apps, web links, and background settings that are applied to a group of tablets. So you can see three profiles that are created here that are available to this teacher. One for after school, one for research projects, one just called Susan Main Profile. And if we look at one of those profiles under the profile menu, we can go to each area. For instance, apps, you can see only two apps here. Those are represented on the tablet screens on the left. And under web links, I have one web link that's available. Visual appearance has already selected the blue background. So if a teacher wanted to change what's available in a profile, um, we can start with apps as an example. So if I come in here to all apps and add another app or two to the profile, I'll check off the boxes and click add to profile apps. Now when we go to the Profile Apps tab, you can see all four apps are available. We can do the same thing with web links. I can come into the All Web Links area and choose another web link to be added to the, um, to the Profile Web Links. And I'll use the Add to Profile Web Links button. I'll go to Visual Appearance and we'll choose a different color background and save that. So I've made changes to my apps, web links, and visual appearance. Now I just need to reapply this profile to my devices. I've already got my device group selected here, Cart A. Susan's main profile is selected in the profile drop-down. I'll click on Activate and confirm Yes, and you'll see instantly the tablet screens change with all of my new icons and background colors instantly. Now the screen you're looking at has jumped to the status area. This shows me which devices are online, and on the right-hand column under Status, it will show me whether apps are missing from the tablets or not. You'll see the two tablets on the left, the one on the top, doesn't have as many icons as the one in the middle. That's because some apps are missing from that tablet. So if I look at the missing apps screen, you can see this tablet, for example, is missing al algebra reference. 
the push button will actually let me install and push that app out to the tablet if it's missing. And that could be available just for administrators or it may be available for teachers as well, just for those few times that an app might be missing that did not get installed to every device in the device group. Now, to take apps on and off the screen, I don't necessarily have to edit a profile. I may already have another profile created for whatever purpose I'm going to change the, the configuration for. So in this case, um, Susan had another profile called After School, and when it's time to activate that, I can just select it from the list, click the Activate button, Confirm, and now that profile is instantly applied to all those tablets. So the teacher might, in the Profiles area, or the administrator, have profiles for different purposes. Uh, it may be for a before school or after school, or when the students have the tablets at home. It might be for different times during the day, for centers, or for a special project, or morning classes and afternoon classes. And then the teacher doesn't have to recreate that profile. They can just apply it at the appropriate time. The other area to look at is the content area. And this is where files can be uploaded into TabPilot and then pushed out to the tablets. So you can see a couple of ebooks listed in here. You can see a graphic um, image, and you can see uh, another EPUB file for another ebook. So e the, each of these can be assigned to a specific folder on the tablet. If I look at this one called tiger.jpg, for example, um, it will show me that it's in the pictures folder and then I can assign it to a specific device group that I want that um, file to be pushed out to. And lastly, I'll show you the My Device feature. Um, this can be enabled if teachers have their own tablet devices that they use, and by registering it as a My Device, it allows it to be used as a source for apps. It also lets the teacher assign their tablet temporarily to one of the device groups that they're using. This allows them to loan their tablet to a student, but it will be in the launch and lock mode where it's locked down for student use. And then when the tablet's returned to the teacher, it can be taken back out of the group so that it's no longer locked down and the teacher can use it freely. I hope you enjoyed the tour of TabPilot Tablet Manager. Look for some of the other videos. There will be one for administrator functions that will show some of the options and configuration settings available to admins. Thanks for watching.